Hello, and welcome to my tutorial series on how to make a 2D platformer in Unity. In this video, we're going to use a tile map and a tile set to add some ground for our character. Let's get started. So in the last video, we imported our art and we created our player game object, Fabio, and then we added a sprite to our object. We added a box collider so things can come into contact with him. And we gave him physics through a rigid body 2D. However, like in the last video, when we hit play, he falls right down because he has no ground to stand on, obviously. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to create his ground, only we're going to create it through something called a tile palette or tile map. The first thing we're going to do for this is we're going to go up here to our hierarchy window and we're going to right click. We're going to go down to 2D object. We're going to go down to tile map and we're going to go down to rectangular and then it's going to create this grid and it says it right here that it has a grid and obviously the grid is just a bunch of squares and it says we have created a tile map and we're simply going to just call our tile map ground and also what was created when we did that was our tile palette which if i click on right here will open up this window which i'm actually going to just going to take this tab and put it up there just like that so we have a nice little neat uh, organized setup here and so in the tile map we're actually going to see your create new palette I'm going to go down I'm going to click on it and it's going to ask me to name my new palette and then I'm just going to call my new palette ground blocks and then I'm going to hit create and then it's going to ask me what folder I want to put this in just for now I'm going to put in the sprites folder and then I'm going to hit select folder and then it created this uh, our tile palette right here in this block. So now we need a sprite to put into our tile palette. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create our block or grab our block rather and just place it right there. And it's also going to ask which folder we want to put this just for now, since we don't have too much, we'll go ahead and put it in our sprites folder. So if we go ahead and we click on our block here, we can see the, the paintbrush here highlighted. And now to put in a block, we just have to click on a square. But as you can see right now, this the blocks aren't big enough for the square. This is not this is not going to work out for us. So let's first erase this by going over here and it says erase with active brush. And then we can simply click on it again and get rid of our mistake. So now we have to increase the size of our block. So to do that, we're going to go over here and click on our block and change it just like we did to Super Fabio here. We changed him to 32 because that fit his his pixels here. We're going to do the same thing to the block, actually. We're going to just change this to 32 because it's 32 by 32 pixel that was used to create the excuse me, create this. Now the block got bigger, but we can just scroll in and out to uh, to increase or decrease the size here on the tile palette. And we'll have other blocks in here also later on. So now when we click our little paintbrush here, or we can click the block, it, it has the same effect. We can see now our block fits and we can click on each individual block, or we can just hold down the mouse button and scroll right over to sort of just paint it on there just like that. And let's just put on a couple layers here for Super Fabio to paint, excuse me, Super Fabio to stand on. And I can do this anywhere. I can just go ahead and make put blocks everywhere, but I don't want to do that obviously because we just need a ground right now. So with that being said, we're actually going to close the tile palette. We'll come back to it later. We're just gonna hit close tab and we're going to hit play. Now, when we hit play Super Fabio, he just fell right through the ground because right now all this is is just sprites it's just a bunch of sprites there's no physics added to it like we put here with super fabio he doesn't it doesn't have a box collider it doesn't have a rigid body 2d or anything we have to add those things so to add this we're going to click on ground and we're going to go over here to add components and we're going to type in tile and we're looking for tile map collider 2d and now this put in a collider for all our blocks individually so we have individual colliders for these boxes, but we actually don't really want that because 
um, if we were to leave this like this, all these individual lines right here would be something that our character would come into contact with. And there's a pretty good chance that he kind of pauses or stutters or trips against them, for lack of a better word. And just to show you a little trick here also, because I want to show you something, if we were to go over to any of these components, they all have a check right here. This is used to activate or deactivate a component. So right now I'm just, I'm just clicking this and it's just taking away the, the sprites right now that have been rendered on here so I can only see the box so I can show you what's going to happen next. So if we go over here, we can see on our tile map collider 2D component, we have this line that says used by composite, which means we want to combine all our blocks together. So let's click that. Now, after we click that, it says this collider will not function with a composite unit. There is a composite collider 2D on the game object that the attached rigid body is on. So what that basically means is that we have to go get another component to use this component. So we need a composite collider 2D to go along with our tile map collider. Now, as you could see, as soon as I added that, all these blocks right here, they became one whole green block. And let me just put this back on for a second. If I were to go ahead actually and open our tile palette and click on this again, every time I create new blocks like so, it creates a separate collider for it. That's going to be one consistent box right there. So that's a very useful tool for when creating your game. So you don't have to keep adding a composite collider when you're using your tile map like this. Let's just go back to closing that actually. And then as we can see also, it added a rigid body 2D and it's set to dynamic. Now let's go ahead and hit play now and watch as both Super Fabio and the ground just fell. That's because both of them are set to dynamic. They're both moving object. So what we want to do is actually want to leave Super Fabio as dynamic and we want to go ahead and make this static, meaning that it's going to stay still and it's going to be, excuse me, going to stay in place. And the minute we did that, our rigid body changed actually, our physics changed. Let's go back and look at this. Before when it was dynamic, it had certain physical properties like drag and gravity and all this, but because it's static and we made it excuse me, because we made it static, it took away those dynamic properties. So now when we hit play, our character stays right on the ground. And actually, let's go over here to scene. If I were to go here and actually I want to click on Super Fabio. If I go here and grab this arrow while it's in play, he's going to fall right down because he's dynamic and the ground's not going to move because it's a static object. So that's where this is going to stop for today. In the next video, we're going to add movement to our characters. So as always, thank you for watching. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and support me on Patreon. And a big special thanks to all my Patreon supporters. All links are in the description below. See you next time.